Welcome to the Elevating La Cultura podcast, a space where I talk with Latinas who are passionate about what they do and are willing to share that passion with others to change the narrative, especially for the next generation. Each season is centered around different topics, but all with the Latina perspective. Welcome to season nine, where we will talk about reflecting on personal stories and letting our brilliance shine. I'm so excited to share these powerful conversations. So vamonos, and let's get into it. I've got another great guest this week. Cynthia Harmony is a bilingual author and educational psychologist originally from Mexico City. She's a 2023 recipient for the Sustainable Arts Foundation Illustrated Children's Book Award and author of Mi Ciudad Sings, Mi Ciudad Canta, Our World, Mexico, and a three-star recipient of A Flicker of Hope and Un Aleteo de Esperanza. Both of her picture books are Junior Library Guild Gold Standard Selections and have audiobooks and Playaway Wonders editions. She lives in Arizona with her family and has two upcoming titles. Let's get into the episode. Hi, I'm excited to be speaking with another Latina author, and um, I'm glad that we connected through LinkedIn, but you mentioned that we connected through another Latina author that I had on the podcast already. So shout out to Alyssa, uh, who wrote Platanos I Love, but I think that there is so much need for more representation in the book space. And so I'm so excited to have a conversation with you. Um, but why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Of course. Yes. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here uh, talking about books today. And yeah, my name is Cynthia Harmony. I'm a children's author. Um, I am like, I also did, but well, I studied educational psychology. So I used to work in museums and I started uh, writing educational texts and books. And then I, I started in the trade book uh, market. So uh, these actually yesterday, my second picture book released. Um, and I have, so I have two with, with Penguin Random House. This is my second one. And I also have a board book with uh, Barefoot Books. And then I also have like educational uh, texts and, and books. I'm originally from Mexico City. And I live in Tucson, Arizona. I've been living here for about 13 years. So you have done quite a bit of writing. Did you always know that you wanted to be a writer? Like what led you to where you're at now in your career? Yes, uh, that's an excellent question. I A lot of people do like have this dream from when they're very young. I want to be a writer and then eventually become one. And it wasn't a dream that I had. I actually didn't even think it was something that was possible. It was just like, because when I was young, I just read books that were written by, you know, like old, you know, white men. And then <laughs> it just wasn't something that I saw that I grew up with. So it was not something, a career that I thought I could pursue. So I I studied psychology because I was really interested in humanities and, and how the mind works and specifically how, how our brains work for learning. So I was really interested in all that education part of it. And then I started uh, working in that. But while I was doing my master's, I, I did my master's in education and I I worked. So my project was working in a, in a book that I developed and then testing that, you know, the, the results of that book in, in a classroom. And then I started reading more children's books during that time. And then that's when I, it just sparked in me. I was like, I, I want to write these kind of books. So not just educational text, but I kind of want to write these books um, in fiction and or nonfiction, but also, you know, but but illustrated books for children. So that's when it started. Um, and then I still worked in museums for, for a few years. So I didn't just immediately just dove into that. I just, I was doing content for children, but I, I knew that I wanted to do that at some point. So when I moved here and I started my family, I... I started taking class and, and I thought, well, this is, this is the time, this is the time where I have to, to, to begin doing this. And so I took classes, I started working on my craft, um, research, how, how to become, you know, an author, how to get an agent, all that stuff until, until I actually started doing it and publishing books, but it wasn't, it sort of just happened, but it wasn't something that I always had in my mind. 
It's so interesting to hear the path or the trajectory that brings you brings us to where we are now because a lot of times we don't even realize I mean like I remember growing up and the pressure to know what you wanted to do when you grew up was so intense especially as a Latina like you want you had to have everything planned out you had a path and you just followed it. And I just love the beauty of the, and having the freedom to see what you enjoy doing and just let it lead you. I think that when we do that and come at it with that mindset, there's more potential for us to create and to actually tap into our purpose. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear about, especially when you started that transition from um, when you started writing, especially when you were working in that museum. Like, I, I'd love to know what headspace you were in and what what motivated you to keep going. Yes. So I think that actually has, I think, was a really important step into realizing that I could do, like, I could create a book like it's, it's a very it's a hard creative process but in the museums that I was working with I started working in a museum just in Mexico City it was like the biggest one of the biggest museums children museums for um in Latin America it's huge and then I started working there and then there were they had all these projects because other places states and countries were asking them to develop new new museums like the whole concept everything so they put a whole team together and then actually started a company that did that. So I just like went into that as well, which was, um, it's kind of like amazing as it sounds, just, it's, it's very creative. You just come up with these concepts from, from nowhere, just names and what the kids are going to be doing, what are they going to be playing? What are they going to be learning? All of these. So it was really exciting. And I think that was the spark, the creative spark where I was just like, okay, this is, this is content for children. This is also also something that I can do like with books that it could just reach children in a different way. Um, so I think that was the beginning of like writing. Even though I didn't know exactly how to write, I, I, I knew how to write content for museums, but I didn't know how to write a picture book, which is it's very specific. Um, and, and I don't know, my, people will be surprised that it's really hard to do um, because you have like, it, you have to use very few words to tell a whole story. So it's hard. Um, but then I, I started working on that craft specifically on how to do that. And then I just fell in love with it and decided this is something that I wanted to do with it. And yeah, it's just open to the opportunity of like doing a little something different that, that it's just kind of, yeah, following what's deep in your heart. Like this is something that brings me joy that I want to do. And if you keep working at it and getting better, it's just like, oh, actually I can do this. So yeah, that was that was the the path. A lot of times when we want to try something new or pivot, we have a hard time knowing where to start. And I am a huge advocate of community and I really think that tapping into the right community is going to really propel someone's growth as they get supported, encouraged, and just helped through the process of transitioning or connecting or networking. So how is that process for you as you were starting to go into a more, uh, well, into a career that was all about writing? What were the first steps that you took into trying to find what to do next, trying to find what community to tap into, what resources to tap into? Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your uh, story, your journey, your advice. I, I agree. Community is, is a key element when you're, when you're trying to build, uh, especially a new skill when you're trying to like polish something and then, yeah, like start a new career. Um, it's it's mentors. It's also friends that that will encourage you and and lead you to the right path. So in the beginning, I think luckily, I, I think the kid lit community in general is really friendly and open. That's what I found when I first started. And back in that day, like many many years ago, um, 
we used Twitter at that point, and I started finding people through there more than any other social media, I think. Um, now I don't use it at all, but but in the beginning, that's what that's where we found each other. We had this specific like kid lead community there, and then it became more specific as you. So I joined. There's there's quite a few resources. I joined the SBWI. It's a Society of uh, Children's Writers and Illustrators. That's kind of like a, one of the first steps into finding like the people and the groups and the resources. And then it became a little bit more specific as you as you go along because because I wanted to find people like me, like people that wanted to tell stories that were, you know, that, that, that represented another aspect like diversity and, and Latinos and, and people, yeah, that, that were interested in that kind of thing and that would also support those kind of stories. Um, so I did, um, I don't know how far along the way, but I found, uh, we actually, um, I think, oh, there was, there was also, which I don't use anymore, but uh, there was a Facebook group for Latinos writers. Um, and then I think that's where we first connected. But then something happened in the like in the industry, in the book industry, about someone getting a book deal that wasn't um BIPOC person, it was just the regular person. And then I think the excuse or, or the justification for it was like, well, there's no, there's no authors or there's no writers of color. So that's why we had to go with this person. So I, this was many years ago, but but still it was just like, oh, it was just, it was heartbreaking to hear for a lot of people that were already publishing books and a lot of people that were trying to uh, write and get better to publish books. So one of these authors, who is Mariana Llanos, uh, who just won uh, Pura Belpre Honor for one of her books, uh, she, she decided, hey, let's just form a group. And then and so we can support each other, like Latin American, Latino writers. And we formed Latin X Speech. At that point, it was like 15, 15, I believe it was 15 authors uh, at that point and illustrators. Um, so we came together and we created this uh, event for, for publishers, for editors and agents to find um, the talent, to find writers and illustrators from these countries. And, and that's how we, can, we became friends. We connected and we started meeting more people that had that same. Um, the same goal and it was wonderful I, I it's still happening to this day I don't, although I don't think they're in Twitter anymore but uh, we're still connected to this day and then there's been a few other groups that have been essential in my career like we need diverse books um, was essential they they offer me a, well I want a mentorship with them in 2020 it was an, it's an opportunity that they have which was incredible for me and then a few other groups like that that supported and wanted more representation in books. Um, so yeah, they were absolutely essential. You mentioned that you ran up against the disparities in Latinx people of color as authors. And, you know, that is so real. I'm, I mean, we, we hear it again that like, oh, well, we didn't see, see anyone we don't know of anyone who's doing this and like even in corporate companies like there needs to be more representation all around like in every area of um, business but how did you um, pursue and push past and persevere through the disparities that are very real in the book industry Yes, that's that's also a really good question. It is true. It's there. It's it's really this. It could be discouraging, like that's that's the truth. It could be many, like even to begin with, the author journey of the career is so hard. There's rejections all the time, and then when you're a person of color, a Latina author, it's even harder, especially in the beginning where you can't find you know the right space. So I think again, it's the, it's the part of the community finding the right people that will support you that will guide you like for example this mentorship that i had was like it changed completely my career my my craft my my knowledge of writing everything um so it and this was a, a, a free opportunity so it was offered for for people of color for writers i believe also illustrators you it's a contest you send in your stuff and then they choose uh, the winners for the year 
and it's still happening every year. And then there's opportunities like this. So just finding these, there's not a lot, but there's a few opportunities out there that will support you. You'll find this community that will guide you and then and then you can push through. It's it's with that, with that guidance, with that encouragement, also with the writer friends that are going through the same thing as you are, um, and that you can find that um, hope, I guess. Yeah, we just got to keep encouraging each other until things change. And I think it's that continued support, continued perseverance that will get us there uh, at, eventually. And um, I think I have seen the hope in the past few years, especially if I, as I've talked to so many Latinas who are doing amazing work and not only doing amazing work, but also helping the next generation. Um, I'd love to know your, um, like to paint a picture on the whole process from start to finish. Cause I think like, as people who just buy books, like we don't see the whole process of like concept, connecting with an illustrator, marketing, like all of that. And I just think it's it would be interesting to hear that from your perspective as you've gone from point A to point Z where the book is out for for people to, to purchase. But what does that look like? Yeah, it's, it, it could I think it could be a little different depending on the publisher, depending on the editor. It sometimes uh, could be different. But yeah, most like the general aspects of it, if you do, well, I decided to get an agent before submitting. So you, there's people that do it differently and they just go directly to, to certain publishers. But I wanted an agent because I wanted the agent to to be able to submit widely to like a lot of publishers that don't accept um manuscripts that are not agented so I wanted just to to have my work out there so again an agent is the first step and then once you get an agent you revise like non-stop until it's ready you're finally the story is ready um you have all your community there with you because of the critique partners your writing friends that will give you feedback and then and then your agent and then you send it out and then the submission process also could, could be very different for for different people. For picture books, I think it's also very specific. Uh, picture books, they could, you know, I think my first book sold in, I don't know, I'm going to say six months, but it could it could be from one month or maybe a few weeks for, for whoever's lucky to like a year or sometimes even more, a year and a half or two. So you could be looking for an editor for a long time. And once someone's interested, they will make an offer and they will want to buy the book and it's really exciting. And then um, normally that's how it happens. Like sometimes they go in auction like where a lot of people are interested and they all want to buy it, but that doesn't <laughs> happen very often. So so when you get an offer and they and you sign the contract, um, then it's about two years. It will take about two years for your book to come out because you're going to keep revising. They're going to send it to copy edits then uh, you're going to choose, well, they, they are going to think of the illustrator that, that best fits that story. And sometimes, hopefully, they'll talk about it with you, and then you can agree on, on someone, and then they need to check with them to see, first of all, if they like the story, and also if they're available, because sometimes they're booked for years. Um, so then when you finally found an illustrator, and they sign their contract, it takes them normally, I think, about a year or maybe a little less to to complete the art for that. And then there's this whole uh, space of time for publicity and marketing, like a little before your book comes out and then after it comes out. Um, so that's about about two years, sometimes more. It's, it's a long time. That's a long time to wait and to be patient. I know as a creative, it's really hard to pour your heart into something and then for it to get critiqued over and over and over and over. How do you protect yourself and stay motivated, stay positive through all of the revisions, edits, critiques? Yes, actually, I was thinking about this earlier, um, that this is a career where you get like, you become a master in how to handle rejection. 
at, at some point it hurts and it hurts because there's a lot of like your um like you said there's a lot of you in there it's a creative process where you're putting a lot of feelings emotion beliefs and all of who you are into your work but but as you go along like in the beginning i think it's really hard to manage and then to kind of like come back from from those rejections and feedback but as i think as you go along in this process it starts to get easier it's just like oh it's just it's just one more it's just it's almost on a daily basis like you get i mean not not feedback from your manuscript but you get some sort of rejection for all kinds of things like now i mean like my book just came out so it's like kind of like the promotion um phase of it and then it's like it's constantly so if you ask for things and you might not get them so it's is this whole thing so so i think that the important part of it is is to know what you really want like what you really want to tell with that story why is it important it needs to be like essential to you like being like in your craft whatever it is for me as an author it's writing for others it could be different things but your craft needs it's something that you can't stop doing for some reason so you have to be committed that's the, the determination and the persistence you you are you are because you have no other choice you, you love it so much so so you are committed to it and then you'll find a way to receive that feedback those rejections and then still believe in it because it's something that you put yourself into so you believe in it so you have to continue and it it's hard it gets a little easier with time but it's 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 not it's uh yeah <laughs> it's i think it's also a skill that you have to to get in the process yeah it's like uh, growing that muscle of not taking it personally and not being offended or yes letting the negative feelings emotions get you down absolutely um, another thing that i was curious about is the process of when you've written a, a book or a manuscript and then you're partnered with an illustrator what does that process look like in order for them to be able to really convey the words that you've written so this is i think also could could be different for different um authors and illustrators and different depending on the publisher and the editor and the it could be different experiences but most of the time also in general it's the author and the illustrator are not in contact during that process it's yes unless you I think like more established authors and illustrators tend to, they can work together and then, they, you know, they they get all this freedom, but the, the majority of like, especially people that are beginning um, like me. So they normally want to separate because they want to give that creative freedom and space to each of them, which kind of makes sense. But coming from, from the museum um, profession where you work, hand in hand with your designers with like the, the the industrial designers and also the graphic designers to create something it was very strange to me that we had like no contact um and then you can add when you when you write your manuscript you can add certain art notes that explain a little bit of what you were kind of envisioning um but it's really up to the illustrator what they want to create and like i think luckily or like if if you're lucky, you're going to be like um, pleasantly surprised with the result. Yeah. Do you get to make revisions on the illustration or that's just a whole separate process? Yes, uh, I think most authors, I think, hopefully get these um, get these opportunity that the editors will share the first drafts of the of the art. Because if there's something important that, oh, you know, that's not what I meant when I was writing these, or um, or there's something, especially for us, like culturally, like, oh, no, this, mm -hmm. is, this doesn't fit, this wouldn't be this way. So you can um, you can give feedback, and they will consider it, and they will share it with the illustrator. That's good. Yeah. Because I, I was wondering about that piece, like, if an illustrator isn't aware, culturally aware, or... Um, yeah, it doesn't understand what is being conveyed. Like you wouldn't, I guess nobody, not the publisher, not the illustrator, not the the writer wouldn't want that to go to print without some um, collaboration. Yes, 
Yeah, um, I think I've been lucky enough to to work with or collaborate with um, illustrators that have that Latin background, so they do have that cultural knowledge, and they also probably do their research, and they've been wonderful. But but yeah, I think they're trying to. I think more and more editors are trying to find the people that are right for the project based on on that, you know. And and if it's someone that has like no contact with that culture, then then I think I would guess it would be a more, um, you know, a, more of a collaboration. I'd love for you to describe the feelings that you feel when you actually get the book in your hands, and like do like an unboxing and can see that the the idea that you had in your head is actually like physical. Um, yeah, describe the emotions and like the experience for you. It's wild. It's especially because I because I was describing it takes so it takes years. Sometimes you kind of for, you forgot what it was <laughs> what it was gonna be, and then all of a sudden you have this like book that's real. You're holding it. It's it's really wild. It's like um, it's a little surreal, and it's it's a lot of emotions. It's like really joy because it finally you know came to life after and like there was a whole team i'm just still like um amazed always I, like when i hold a book for the first time just like oh my god all these people working to create these like that to the best of their ability to make these you know the best book they could they could make it's it's amazing and then the art just seeing the art for the first time before even holding the book, it's just like, it's oh, it's my favorite moment of the whole process. It's just amazing. You're like blown away. You're like, what? It's, it's, a, it's amazing. You just thought of a word or a sentence or a story and then you get, you, it comes to life. It's amazing. Um, and then, yeah, holding it and that just, <laughs> you can smell the book. You can, all these details, like the end papers is something amazing from picture books that I love. Um, the, you know, the group. For example, these my book right now has a I'll show you real quick has a wrap around uh, cover. So the 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 front cover and the back go like connect into one spread. So these are only things that you can appreciate when you have it in your hands, like right. So it's it's amazing. It's just you fall in love with it all over again. It's a great great experience. Yeah, a lot of times the conversations that I have as an entrepreneur and as I mentor and encourage other entrepreneurs is that, and other creatives, um, and Latinas in general, I think there's so many people that can relate to having goals and then meeting those goals, and then being conditioned to just go for the next one without taking time to appreciate how much work and time and sacrifice has gone into achieving this step. And by the time you realize it, you've like grown so much and you haven't taken the time to celebrate or even reflect. And so I always like to ask people, what did you do to celebrate this accomplishment. Um, and this is something that I too need to work on in my own life, being able to stop and really reflect and celebrate. So I draw inspiration from other people sharing what they do. So would you mind sharing? Have you been able to celebrate? Have you been able to reflect? And what did that look like? I think this is this is so true. I'm I'm really connecting with what you're saying because and just in a pot, no, in a panel like a, a month ago, I was just talking about that. They said like if you could go back in time to to your younger self and tell something, what would you tell yourself to do? Like at the beginning of your career, or whatever. And that's what I said. I, I would tell myself to celebrate because it's something that we do forget. I like my agent reminds me also like when he emails something about you know, a special moment where he's like celebrate because we do forget. We do just move on to the next thing. For example, this book just came out yesterday and I'm already, okay, so so the event that's coming up and then this promotion thing and it's like, okay, can you just stop and like realize it's here. It's amazing that it's here and, and celebrate. So yeah, so normally I would just 
I haven't been doing it for every in every moment, but I try to. I try to get a little treat, like a sweet, like a cake or a chocolate, something, a, a drink, and then do communicate with the family. Like, hey, this is like two days, the blooper, because they they go through it. And like, they're just so like, I think they tune out everything because they have to go through all the process. So they're just so used to it. But it's like, hey, today is the special day that I was talking about for all these two years. So let's celebrate. So I do communicate. I think communicating to others and having them like, like understand also how important it is. You can share with your own community and then, and then making it special for yourself. I do buy myself something that I feel like is just going to take this moment and celebrate with cake or whatever. Oh, that's so nice. And I hope my listeners find encouragement to do that in their own life. I think sometimes we blow past things and just like minimize them and say like, oh, well, yeah, I wrote another book or I I sold out an event or yeah, okay, now what's next? Like you said, because um, there's always something next. Um, but even taking time to treat yourself with something small and taking that time to specifically say I did it or I reached my goal is is huge and is a pattern that the next generation is looking at and will also be able to implement in their own life if they see the adults in their lives doing it for themselves. So yes, I love that you shared that. Thank you. Um, okay, so if there is someone who is wanting to start and like kind of jump into being a writer, an author, um, what steps would you have for them to like start the process? Because I know that there's a lot of my peers um, in the Latina community who are launching books, starting the writing process. And so there is more representation coming up and I'm so excited for it. But then like also comes the question like, oh, when, when are you writing a book? When are you, you should write a book. And we're all encouraging each other. Like you need to get your story out there. Um, but for those who really desire to start that process, uh, what would you have, what, what advice would you give them? Um, for th- so yeah, you're asking for s- someone that has like made that serious decision to, to commit to yeah. this. Yeah. Um, so find the, the resources. So there is like, first, like, I think the authors that you admire or sort of kind of want to emulate, like, I think finding the mentor texts are essential, but beyond that, then find who's writing the mentor text that you would, the, the kind of book that you would want to write. So find that author or illustrator if, you, if you're an artist. So, and then go research them a little bit, go to their website because they normally will uh, uh, share their resources, uh, which kind of, you know, what kind of uh, organizations and groups they're part of, because that would probably be something that would be useful for you. So if it's picture books, and, so there's these, I think I would start with the bigger ones, the bigger groups and organizations that that work for that for for being a writer, depending on what kind of yeah writer you want to be, and then and then go from there. Like I think what I did is probably what most people do is you go from the from the big groups. Oh, there's also a group that encourages you to write one manuscript, one picture big manuscript uh, a month. So I did that in the beginning in the beginning of the first year, and it was really helpful because I thought well. If I'm lucky, I'm going to write one, you know, one draft in like six months or something. But then if, if you have a community that's kind of like expecting that and a lot of people are doing it, it's sort of encouraging and then you can actually do it. And then from there, from when you have something actually like drafts, then you can really, really work with that. You can really revise and have things ready for you. And that will set you up for like finding an agent and then and then publishing eventually. So I will find those bigger groups and then the, the more the community that really aligns with it for us Latinas, like more Latino community. So I'm also part of this group called Las Musas. So Las Musas mm-hmm. is for Latina, Latina creators, writers and illustrators, and then for their debut and sophomore book. After that, you can become a madrina, which means like you mentor new writers. So I would I would suggest go go find those opportunities, follow those groups that are more aligned with the specifically who who you are, and then what kind of book you want to write, and then I think you'll find opportunities there. 
That's exciting. Yeah, I think that there is. I did hear about Las Musas um, before, and I hope that people are encouraged to start the process. It could be intimidating, daunting, especially if, like you, didn't have that dream to be a writer, but are finding yourself in the position that perhaps you could start writing a book or... um, yeah, start going in that direction. Now that your book is out, it's official, where can we like expect to see it? And how can we support? The pandemic kind of helped connect people across the country through video. And like it's given more opportunity for people to hear about your brand, your your name, your um, creations. And I think that there is like such beauty in the community growing online and then to in person. Whereas before it was like you meet someone in person and then you connect online. And so I, I'd love to support you and um, follow you on your journey, especially as you launch this book and start the the marketing tour. Um, So is there any place that we can expect to see you, that we can support, that we can give you a shout out or help connect you with? Thank you. So yeah, um, I'm going to have events, my publisher set up events locally, like in Tucson, where, where I'm, where I'm, where I'm at. So if you're in Tucson, come find me because I will have three events at the bookstores um but i think it's so because what you said in the during the pandemic we had a lot of virtual uh opportunities which was i also appreciated that a lot and then now we were looking for a virtual um event for me and the illustrator the illustrator lives in germany so we wanted a virtual one we haven't found the right um uh, platform or you know the host but eventually i hope we find one to to be able to share with people all over the place um and in the meantime yeah so my book is available like uh luckily in all of the stores everywhere so and and if not then you can also request at your library i think most people don't know that that's how they can support authors it's just like well i can't buy that book right now or i don't have kids but um but you can also always support an author just by writing a review or or requesting at your library because if the library carries it for you know the kids in your community it's going to reach a lot of readers and that's what we want so that's a way of supporting. And then I think, yeah, just sharing with someone that you think might be interested in the kind of stories that, that we're creating, I think it's also something that's helpful. Yeah, I'm excited for you and your continued growth. Um, I always like to ask, and I know that you shared so much wisdom and so much advice, but is there anything that you'd like to share um, like advice or encouragement for the next generation? So um, I, I, in, in what we talked about before the, the podcast, you said something about imposter syndrome or, and I, I think that's something um, that I want to share. Like we do, especially as women and especially as Latina women, we might believe that more often than other people like oh I'm not supposed to be here or am I talented enough or I'm and and I think we need to shake that a little bit off like it's 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 healthy in a certain aspect where we just can keep learning you know and that that's it's humility and that's good but I think it's also like understanding that we have talent and we deserve that space to also share you know our our talents so that would be my advice to to believe that that we do have a lot to share and to take the space. Yeah, I love that you shared that because a lot of times when we don't have or we're feeling that imposter syndrome, we have to be strong enough to encourage ourselves. But it's like a muscle, like the the more that you can hype yourself up, the more that you in like in turn hype other people up, they will then pour that back into you. And we're just going to keep encouraging each other until 
we are in spaces that we have created and we just feel like that celebration um, amongst us. And so, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I appreciate that. Like continue growing, continue encouraging yourself and yeah, let's shake, shake that imposter syndrome off. And then something that you just said right now, also like uh, as women, and I don't know, how or when but but society is like okay we're just like very critical of each other at you know and like through history instead of supporting us supporting each other like we if we encourage each other and then support our accomplishments it's just like the, the sky's the limit so yeah absolutely yeah creating these spaces that we create for ourselves i love that yeah yeah for sure um thank you so much this has been an amazing conversation. I'm so happy to be able to speak with you and I'm thankful for the encouragement that you gave to our listeners. But where can people find you and support you? So I, uh, you could just go to my website, CynthiaHarmony.com, just harmony as it sounds and like music. So it's pretty easy, CynthiaHarmony.com. And then um, I'm in Instagram and threads at the moment. So you can find, it's also just like at Cynthia Harmony and then you, you can find more information about the books that are already out and the more books that are coming because I have a few others coming. Oh yeah, I was going to ask, like, do you have a few books in the, in the network of being, going from point A to point published? Yes. So I, I was telling a friend the other day, yeah. So last year, um, my agent and I sold four books. So it was a crazy year. I don't think that's really common. <laughs> so yeah, so they're not because it takes a long time for them to come out there and um, they're not coming out at the same time. So the, but in the, I think starting 2025, 2026, and then it's, we'll have more books coming. So hopefully at least one a year, sometimes like two a year, but yeah, more, more are coming. So I'm excited about that. Yay. I'm excited to read your book. I'm going to um connect with you and i hope that we can meet each other in person uh sometime soon but until then i'm we'll stay connected through the social media absolutely um, karina yeah. thank you so much this was a pleasure and and what you created in this podcast is also pretty amazing so thank you for that oh thank you all right well we will stay connected and we'll talk to each other soon yes bye bye we are celebrating with Cynthia and all her accomplishments, past, present, and future. All right, there will be a new episode every Tuesday. So after you listen, feel free to take a screenshot, post on Instagram, and tag at Elevating La Cultura, or send me a DM. You can also comment on this YouTube video if you're watching online. I always like to hear from people and how they resonate with the stories that I share. So leave a review on Apple Podcasts so we can get more ears listening to these stories and we can continue elevating La Cultura. All right, enjoy the rest of your day, afternoon, evening, whenever you're listening, y nos vemos next week. Bye!